Welcome to ECLIMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed a lead acid accumulator as one of the example of secondary cells which can be recharged after use. And we said a lead acid accumulator is the most reliable and cost effective accumulator because it's relatively cheap. We also discussed how to charge a lead acid accumulator and we said you use direct current and you connect in parallel with the charging uh, DC source. So in this lesson, we are going to look at the maintenance of a lead acid accumulator. And here we're going to discuss the things that you must observe for this battery to last for a long time. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to discuss the maintenance of a lead acid accumulator right from identifying if it has discharged to topping it up and even storing it. So the first maintenance of a lead acid accumulator is that the level of the electrolyte, remember the electrolyte we are using in this case is sulfuric six acid, which is dilute. So the level of the electrolyte or the liquid which we use inside this battery should be checked regularly. It should be checked regularly and maintained above the plate. So this liquid which we put inside here should be above these plates. As you can see inside here, we have the plates. So the level should be above these plates. And we have a line here which is transparent where you will be observing that. So this level should be above the plate. And if it goes below the plate, then topping should be done by distilled water. You should do what we call topping. You fill that level and you use only distilled water. In this case, you don't, you are not allowed to use the acid to fill this or to top up this battery. Now, why don't we use the acid and why can't we even use tap water. We don't use tap water because tap water has some ions. It has some ions like magnesium ions and it has calcium ions. So we don't use it because if we use tap water, then these ions are going to react with this acid to produce salt and water and that one they are going to create what we call local cells. So we don't top up this one using uh, tap water because tap water has some ions. Then why can't we use an acid? Remember, you will discuss later something called the molar conductivity. The conductivity or the movement of ions is best when the concentration is low. So if you increase the acid inside this uh, solution, the concentration of the acid will be very high. Therefore, there will be lower molar conductivity. All in short, the movement of the ions will be very slow. So we don't use an acid because when the concentration of the acid is low, the ions will move fast. When the concentration is high, the ions will move slow. Then the second maintenance is that the accumulator should be charged when the EMF of the cells is below 1.8 volts. So you measure the voltage of this one using a voltmeter of this battery. If it goes below 1.8 volts, and then you have to recharge your battery. If you don't have a voltmeter, but you have an hydrometer, then you can check the relative density. You can check the relative density of the acid. Uh, and if it's below 1.12, remember relative density does not have units because relative density means you are dividing density by density. So if relative density is below 1.12, then you have to charge your battery or recharge your battery. Relative density is measured using an hydrometer. You are going to discuss this one in form 4, a topic called floating and sinking, and you are going to make a symbol hydrometer, which is going to be used to measure relative density. But I'm very sure you have interacted with an hydrometer, especially in milk selling geosics, they have to check the density of milk. If it goes beyond, below some density, then they tell you have added water. So here, we are going to discuss an hydrometer later. 
So the third maintenance is that large current should not be drawn from them for a long time. And the key word here is for a long time. So this battery, the, you can draw large amount of current. But if you want to draw large amount of current, then you should draw a, for a very short time. So if you want to draw for a long time, then it will not be effective. And then that battery will get destroyed easily. So another maintenance is that this battery should not be left in a discharged condition for a very long time. Remember, in a discharged condition, I told you, we have lead sulfate. If, we, if, a, if this battery, the lead which was there was converted to lead sulfate, then here it's a discharged state and this lead sulfate or lead 2 sulfate is in solid state. Now for you to charge it, you have to convert this one to lead 4 oxide and lead metal. You have to convert it to lead 4 oxide and lead metal and then so if it's in discharge this as a lead sulfate if you leave it for a long time this lead to sulfate solid will solidify and harden in such a way that when you are going to charge it it cannot be converted to lead 2 or lead 4 oxide and lead metal so the process where lead lead 2 sulfate harden and it becomes irreversible then we call that process salvation salvation is a process in which the lead 2 sulfate deposit on the plates of the of this uh, battery harden up and cannot be converted back to lead 2 oxide and not lead 2 oxide but lead 4 oxide and uh, lead metal. Now the fifth maintenance is that shorting. Shorting is when you connect the positive terminal and the negative terminal with a wire and then you start producing sparks. Shorting should not be allowed. Or should be avoided by all cost and also overcharging overcharging means you are leaving this battery in a charging condition even after it has been it is full now who can tell me why we should not overcharge this battery the reason why we should not overcharge this battery remember when we are charging it we are using direct current and direct current only moves in one direction it's moving inside this battery so when you connect your direct current in parallel to this battery like this if you leave it after it has been or after it's full and you continue leaving it like that this is the dc this battery will bulge you will destroy the cells of this battery because this current cannot come cannot reverse back it only come into the battery it is full it will still come into the battery so in this case if you leave it in charging condition for a very long time after it is full then you are going to destroy the cells and sometimes even the sides of this battery will bulge and swell out. So the other, the sixth maintenance is that the terminals of this cell should always be cleaned. This terminal, the positive terminal and the negative terminal should always be cleaned. You can clean them using a sandpaper or even scratch them to remove the layer which is of an insulator. So again, you should grease them to make sure that they don't rust. So you clean them, you, are, you remove the rust, and then you grease them. You grease them, they don't rust, and then they are going to give you maximum voltage. Then the seventh and the last maintenance of this uh, accumulator is that this accumulator should not be left directly or should not be placed directly on the ground during storage. So when you have charged your battery, when you bring it to your home, you should not place it directly on the ground and this is because when you place it directly on the ground, a thing will take place. Some of the erections, remember plastic can conduct some charges. So some of the charges will be added to the ground and in that process, you have it, you, the battery will discharge. That's why when you leave it on the ground, after some time you will find that it does not, it does not have any charge. So it should be rest on an insulator like a, wood, a wooden block. So you should place it on top of an insulator like a wooden block or a small ta wooden table in that case a thing will not take place and your battery will last for a very long time in a charged condition as you are going to use it for your own uh, purposes so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss nickel alkaline accumulators 
and then later we'll discuss the capacity of accumulators.